Welcome to Live Free Effects. Emmanuel here. Thank you for tuning in and watching another video. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're going to be covering a very important topic, the art of dealing with losses. In this video, I'm going to be covering why this topic is important to you as a trader, whether you are a developing trader or a seasoned trader. I'm going to be talking about how the brain works when we experience a losing trade and how this affects your physiology as well as your psychology. And finally, some of the tips that I have found from my personal experience that has helped me uh, become better at dealing with losses. Let's get right into it. So why is this topic important to you as a trader? When a lot of traders first come into the market, they only focus on technical analysis. Strategy is the main focus and the psychology portion is literally thrown in the backseat until a lot of traders start experiencing a lot of difficulties that they can't explain uh, that your technical analysis or your ability to predict the market isn't able to fix and losing is one of those experiences. It's purely psychological. How you handle your loss has nothing to do with the technical aspect of trading, but it is purely uh, based on your psych psychological makeup. Whether you've been trading for a while or you're coming into the market, you're going to lose. There's no getting around it. It's the pure truth. If any trader tells you that they don't experience a losing trade, lie, 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 more lies. <laughs> Everyone loses in the game. Even the best traders who make six figures, whatever, they all lose. We all lose. It's part of the territory as being a trader. But I believe that how we deal with the losses that we encounter as traders is, and, and that ability is really what separates a great trader from an amateur. So understanding this concept is very, very critical to your success as a trader because I believe that it's what's going to take you to the next level. So let's take a look at how does this affect your, how does your brain work when you experience a losing trade? That's a very important topic. Let's get right into that. How does the brain work when we experience a losing trade? As a trader, you can probably remember a time when you took a trade and one loss led to another and another and another. What happened? You might simply feel like you lost control. What a lot of traders don't realize is that losing to the brain can feel like a threat to our survival. From my experience, I also found that the potential thought, the, the thought of a potential loss could actually make me feel like I'm under attack physically and mentally as well. If you've taken some time to do any research on this or you've worked with a trading psychologist, uh, for example, a common analogy that you will hear is it feels like you're being chased by a wild animal. As crazy as that sounds, believe me, it's actually, I haven't been chased by a wild animal, but I can tell you that I've had some pretty intense experiences as a trader that got my heart rate going. So um, I can definitely relate with that. What a lot of traders don't realize is the stress that you're experiencing at that time, whether you are risking you know, $500, you're risking $50, whatever you're risking that you simply don't wanna lose, or even if you've just experienced a series of losses uh, that's making you feel slightly uh, more uncomfortable, that stress that you feel now goes on and triggers your amygdala. Your amygdala is part of your limbic system. And one of its many functions is to process uh, threat or fearful emotions. And when that is triggered, you as a trader, we as a trader go into a fight or flight mode. From my experience, what I noticed in that, it, 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 in going in there, is I would see a an increase in my heart rate. My heart rate would increase significantly. Uh, my there would be a lot of tension in my body. Either you know I'm tense in my shoulders, rounding my back, just feeling a lot of discomfort overall. Another another thing too is holding my breath and not breathing properly, not doing that to calm my body at all. So at this point, you can probably imagine it's not the best 
position to be in to make any sort of good decision. If you are experiencing a flight mode uh, experience, you will likely go into revenge trade after losing a trade. And this is just, it's simple. You know where revenge trading is. You've done it before um, it, uh, at some point in time, right? So pretty much what you can experience is the urge to make your money back. And if you are going experiencing a flight, uh, you're, 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 you're in the flight mode, you'll likely experience a, the, the urge to retreat and you could also experience the loss of confidence in yourself as well as your ability to trade. Either uh, they're both equally bad. Um, obviously the urge to um, fight is probably a lot more aggressive than the flight mode, but both of them require work and a bit of understanding in order for you to get uh, beyond them. So let's take a look at how this goes on to affect your, psycho your psychology as well as your physiology. So how does this affect your physiology? Physiology simply means your body. So how does a losing trade affect your body? I've mentioned earlier the increased heart rate and the increase in tension in the body. You might also notice that you are rounding your back or you're moving different parts of your body. Maybe you can't even sit on your on your computer desk to, to watch the tr trade play out or you're walking up and down rather than maintaining a calm and, 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 and collected uh, headspace. A common mistake a lot of traders make after experiencing a, a losing trade or a series of losing trade is going right back into the market without taking the time to really calm themselves down and kind of calm the body down. So they go right back into the market and start scanning for, for more, more opportunities. What's likely to happen is the stress will drive us into survival mode. And when you get into survival mode as a trader, a common thing that you could also experience too is that you're, you, you get tunnel vision and you start to focus and you start to zero in on the chart or whatever currency pair you're taking a look at. And in that state of mind, you can't actually analyze because you're so focused on not losing money again that you just narrow your vision and any sort of logical thinking um, it, it disappears and you become more reactive. So if you've done this before, it's okay. Everyone's, most traders have made this mistake. I would say pretty much all traders at some point have experienced this. Um, what it's similar to is being chased by a wild animal. If you're taking a look at a, a man standing in front of a lion, for example, I haven't been in front of any wild animal, but you can imagine it wouldn't be, you, you, you wouldn't be thinking logically, you would be thinking more uh, reactive, right? So that's kind of what it's similar to because your brain or your amygdala, when, once it zeroes in on the threat, its only focus is survival. So understanding how your physiology play, the, the, the role your physiology has in, in your trading is also very important because once you start to make these little key observations, it will give you an edge because you start to understand when you are about to do certain things or even when your psychology, sorry, or, or like when you get to a point where you're you, like, you, like you know you're going into survival mode. So these are clues that will guide you or act as a guiding um, compass for you. So let's take a look at how this goes on to affect our psychology. So once your amygdala has been triggered and you as a trader, you're currently experiencing a fight or flight response. Now it's played a role in your physiology, your body. How does it affect your psychology? After experiencing a series of losing trades or even just one loss, you might experience anger, you might experience fear or hesitation towards taking your next trade because you're not as confident or you might even experience frustration. This will play out in your trading as what we know as revenge trading. You might find that you are also forcing the trade and maybe there's not a setup there, but you just want to be in the market. You just want to do something. You want to get involved and you want to fight. 
So that's just that's that's a few ways. A lot of traders will also experience the need to make up for their prior losses, the clawback mentality, right? You want to make everything that you lost. So you start to risk more, you start to over leverage, and before you know it, your account's gone. These are things that are outside your trade plan, obviously, because they're not constructive and then they're not going to help you get to your goals as a trader. So it's very important to know some of the behaviors that are happening once you get into that fight or flight mode. As a trader, once you realize that this is what's happening, your main goal is to say, well, my psychology has been compromised and I'm going to stop trading. And it takes a, it takes a bit of awareness on your part to do this. So now we've talked about your physiology, the role, the fight, your amygdala plays in terms of your physiology as well as your psychology. Now let's get into some tips that will enable you as a trader to deal with your losses when you experience them and to not go into this fight or flight mode that most traders experience. So let's get right into that. So how do you deal with a series of losing trade or even just one losing trade? Number one tip, stop trading. It's something that you probably hear all the time and you know it yourself, but it's critical because after experiencing a losing trade, when you go into your fight or flight mode, especially the fight mode that most traders go into is I need to make my money back because frankly, a lot of traders are controlled by the PL. In order for you to feel good about yourself and what you're doing in the market, you need to win. And when you win, you feel like you're on top of the world. When you lose, you don't feel so good. So you're constantly chasing that win, win, win. And when you don't get it, it's like, well, I gotta go after it. So that pool of fighting and trying to recuperate prior loss and clawing back is probably not the best thing that you can do. One of the best things that you can do is to stop trading, take the time to just even close the chart, close the chart down, close the chart down. You could take a break uh, if you are, if you experience a loss earlier in the day. If it depends on what strategy, if you're a day trader, maybe take a five minute break, maybe take a 10 minute break and calm yourself down and relax. So number one, stop trading. This is something that you can also do too if you are experiencing a drawdown, it's past a series of losses. Now you've gone into a significant drawdown and you just, you've been in there for weeks or, or months and you don't know how to get over it because everything you're doing isn't working. You stop trading, take some time off. Don't be afraid to take some time off and don't buy into the fear of missing out because frankly, there will always be another opportunity, but it's not gonna do you any good if you are still dealing with the stress, the anxiety, and the emotions of your prior losing trades. You can't bring that to the next opportunity because it's not gonna serve you. So that's number one, stop trading. So number two, journal your trade. If you're not doing this, this is a big one because journaling your trade simply means that you care about tracking your performance. After experiencing a series of losing trade or even a loss, journaling that trade while the emotions are still fresh will give you great insights um, when you look back on it because you can tell whether it was a system error in terms of, in terms of your st strategy or if it was a psychology-based issue, maybe you were feeling uh, down or not so confident or you couldn't tell what was happening in the market, but you just went with it anyways. So while you, when you do it while it's still fresh, will give you the, the, the right insight that you need. If you don't do it while it's fresh, it's also important to do it at some time, whenever, but just journal your trade because it will allow you to track your performance over a period of time. And one more thing when it comes to journaling your trade, a big one that I had to realize is just because you had a losing trade doesn't mean that it was a system error or even a psychology problem. It just means that you could be on the wrong side of probabilities. So either way, you can always learn from it, but there's always a difference between losing trade and um, losing a trade when you make a mistake. But you 
journaling your trade will allow you to properly identify that. So that's number two, journal your trades. Number three, take responsibility for your losing trade, but don't beat yourself up for it. Taking responsibility doesn't mean that you are saying, well, man, I screwed up or man, there's something wrong with me or my trading system or whatever it is. No, that's not what taking responsibility is. Taking responsibility simply means that you understand that the work you have to do to get better as a trader is entirely up to you. And that losing trade is a stepping stone for you to gauge your performance and see how you can use that to get better. Most traders are controlled by your P&L. When you experience a losing trade, you are sad. When you experience a, a positive trade, you are happy. And the unfortunate part is that's actually how we as human beings are. If you think of your life, when something positive happens, you are excited, you're ecstatic, it's, it's easy to connect with positive emotions. And when something negative happened, it's a lot easier to connect with negative emotions than it is to connect with positive emotions. So when you are experiencing, um, you've experienced a losing trade, take responsibility for it, but don't engage in the, oh, I'm not good enough and this is, I suck. And you've probably experienced it before, but try to limit that as much as you can because once you do that, you can go into the next trading, understanding whatever mistake that you made, learning from it and moving in with confidence. And if you end up beating yourself up after taking a loss, chances are, even if you know what you should be doing as a trader or whatever mistake you made, the because it's not going to act as a a positive reinforcement for you when you when you slam yourself at the door um so definitely 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 take responsibility but don't beat yourself up for it number four change your physiology after experiencing a losing trade it's very easy to carry that fight or flight mode especially if you're feeling frustrated and down and angry that you just lost the trade, whatever the amount is. This will play out in your body, just with your posture. That's also an easy one. It, and it reflects a level of confidence in yourself. So some of the things that I do personally for myself is breathing. I focus on breathing uh, to keep my body uh, more, more relaxed. I also go out, listen to music, Listen to something positive. If it's an inspirational tape or even exercise, exercise is a great way because that's that's an easy one. It releases a lot of happy chemicals in the body. If you don't know that already, you should try exercising. Something else that I find extremely, extremely useful is uh, meditation. Meditating is probably one of the most useful thing that you can do as a trader because it allows you to not just analyze your past performance internally, but you can also create new performance uh, that you would like to engage in in the future. So when you meditate, you can visualize your trading process. How do you want to trade? What, what, what mistakes were you making before that you've now changed, that you've now improved on? So it's a great way for you to kind of like change what's happening in the brain and just bring that into your trading. It takes work, obviously, but that's one of the ways that you can go about um, dealing with your loss and changing your physiology after experiencing a losing trade. Number five, after experiencing a series of losing trades, it's very important that when you go back into the market that you start small. If you have position sizing uh, plan in place, look at that and if it's a solid position size and plan that tells you what you should do when you're experiencing a drawdown that's amazing because now you can actually go and use that if you are if it's just simply a a loss and it still fits within your position size and plan or your risk management plan you can stick with it but if you haven't created a solid risk management plan and a position size and plan my best advice is 
when you go back into the market after experiencing a series of losing trade, especially if you feel like your confidence in your ability to trade and your system is slightly shaky, don't hesitate to lower your position size. You determine whether you want to lower it in half or whatever you're comfortable with, but don't go to the max right away because you, you never know. You, the, it's, it, the losing streak might continue. So definitely, definitely keep your positions uh, regulated when you go back after experiencing a losing trade. Number six, put system in place that will assist you in uh, keeping a clear mind while you're trading. As a trader, it's very important to have a routine that you consistently engage in. What time are you getting up at? What time are you looking at the market? Uh, what are you doing in between that time? What's the environment that you're trading? So definitely try to create a solid, uh, soothing environment for yourself where you can stay calm and you can stay relaxed in terms of your psychology and physiology and have a day-to-day -day routine that actually help keep your mind clear as well as your head. Number seven, if you haven't done this already, consider working with a professional. A lot of traders spend a lot of money buying courses and learning everything they can in regards to strategy, but your psychology is probably one of the biggest investments you can make because it's 80% of that, right? It's 80% of, 80 of what you're bringing in the market is your psychology. So working with a professional in that aspect will give you that edge and will help you develop a strong mental state that will not only allow you to come back after experiencing a losing trade, but will also give you the ability to stabilize yourself as a trader, even when you are experiencing a series of winning trade, because that is also um, just as deadly as experiencing a series of losing trade as well. But overall, creating more stability and just creating a lot of um, fine skill as a trader finding, uh, bringing everything together in terms of your strategy as well as your psychology and making you a well-rounded trader. So that's one of the important aspects of working with a professional. Number eight, and our final tip of the day, exercise a live-free mentality. Live-free could mean a lot of things. Having the abundance of your finances together, uh, being able to do whatever you want, without any sort of restriction, great. But part of living free is understanding that you're not gonna be able to control the external factors in life, but what you can control is the internal factors, how you feel internally. As a trader, you can't control whether you win or you lose. Obviously, you can create a great system that has a high probability and give you a high probability of succeeding. But losses will still come regardless of what strategies you face. And when you're dealing with a series of losing trades or even a loss, you can choose to ex exercise and live from an internal standpoint where the loss does not define you. And this is a mindset. It's a mentality. And it's something that we as human beings have. At any given point in time, you can say, I'm not gonna let this loss define me. I'm not gonna let it make me feel worthless. I'm not gonna make it make me feel stupid. I understand that this is something that I can learn from and this is something that I will improve, but more importantly, I know where I am going. So living free now, living from an internal standpoint is just being able to focus on what your goals are as a trader. And even when you go through those ups and downs, you don't get to a point where you're controlled by your the external factors. So sorry for the little hiccup, but yes, you get the point. So most definitely live free because that's one of the best things that you can do. And that's the video, guys. Thank you for watching another video. Thank you for supporting the channel. Hope this was very insightful for you. If you took something out from it, definitely leave a comment down below, like, and subscribe. Uh, once again, I hope you guys are out there living free. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Cheers.